to your meal free of charge. Good evening. I'd like uh, two regular... <coughs> Mr. Mozzarella Pizza Parlour, this is Colin speaking. How may I help you? Yes, we're open till 12 tonight. OK. Yes, sir. Good evening. I'd like two regular... <coughs> <laughs> Mr. Mozzarella Pizza Parlour, this is Colin speaking. How may I help you? One, Mr. Mozzarella, thin and crispy, Mount Vesuvius, and one Mr. Mozzarella side order of garlic bread cheese supreme. And you will be collecting your food. This order has been taken at... Oh, God. 8.15. <laughs> your Mr. Mozzarella pizza will be ready in 12 minutes. If your Mr. Mozzarella pizza is not ready in 12 minutes, you will be entitled to, to your kill meal the entire free of staff. charge. <laughs> OK, thanks. Bye. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I'm actually here. Good. I'd like to order two... Pizza parlour, this is Colin speaking. How may I help you? No, I think you've got the wrong number. OK. I want a regular thin and crispy fisherman. Mr Mozzarella, pizza parlour, this is Colin speaking. How may I help you? Two Mr Mozzarella Super Supremes. And uh, one hot American with uh, extra olives. And one Mr Mozzarella American hot with extra olives. And uh, three large cokes. And three large cokes. Well, look, look, boy, cut. Chris is just way up on the outside. Little trouble with you, you feel like there. Gil Jelmy W. Lily, 16. Hathi Corp Laird, Old Pascal, 1. 19 for 1, 43 for 2. What a master. I could listen to him for hours, you know. The unforgettable John Arlott. He's dead now, of course. I know how he feels. Can we have some music now, Oh, no, there's a really good bit coming up. Gucci's first one in Test Cricket. Oh, my, please. Oh, okay. minutes, you will be entitled to your meal free of charge. Yes, sir. Yeah, vegetarian deluxe with sweet corn and extra green peppers. And some garlic bread and... Mr. Mozzarella Pizza Park. Oi, this is I was Colin talking speaking. to you. How may I help you? I said I was talking to you. One thin and crispy. <laughs> you get the Chinese. and three large cokes. Oh, and 13 minutes, just out of time. <laughs> Thanks. Well, punched him. Just like that. Yeah. Was he badly hurt, blood and stuff? No. Not worth a picture, then. Oh, my. Just thinking. Nice puffy face, good front page. How much do we owe you, Dad? That's OK. My treat. Oh, <laughs> you can buy the next lot, mate, yeah? All uh right. -huh. Anything happening yet? No. My tip-off says he normally doesn't come out till nine. Well, how's the book going, Gab? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, that novel you're writing. Had a rejection letter from Simpson and Schreiber this morning. Oh, well, every new writer gets a few of them when they start. Have a 28. <laughs> Helpful, these publishers. You know, you'd think they'd given you right to some feedback, some guidance. 
Read that. Dear Mr. Hardy. Hardy? My pseudonym. Nelson Hardy. Thank you. <laughs> Dear Mr. Hardy, many thanks for your novel, Blood Feud. But I am afraid that it does not fit in the current requirements. Exactly. What does that mean? It means it's crap. <laughs> I always put that when I can't think of anything nice to say. So what's this blood feud about, then? Oh, my God, the light's gone on. Come on. Oh, God! It's all over the shoes! <laughs> it's sopping wet. Same time next Wednesday, my darling. You said you would stay for a meal. Kiss her. Go on, plant one on her. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll try to get longer next week. All right for you. I've got a whole chicken to get through now. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Councillor Stewart, Gavin Nelson of the Herald, about your relationship with Mrs. Lavers. Oh, my God. Flat Brady from the Herald, Mrs. Lavers. I wanted to ask you one of the questions. No, I've got about... a chicken to get out of the oven. Oh, Mrs. Lavers. <laughs> Councillor, Mrs. Laver runs the local amateur dramatic, but you've just awarded them a grant of £10,000. Would you care to comment on that? Or the fact that it's their fifth grant in 18 months? Theatre equipment's expensive. Yeah, well, theirs is the only amateur dramatic group in the country with a revolving stage. Did you see their production of South Pacific? Superb. I reviewed it. It was dreadful. And was it really necessary to send Mrs. Lavers to the South Pacific to research it? What's that scratching noise? Well, never mind that. I have nothing to say. This is a gross intrusion. I shall be talking to your editor in the morning. I understand their next production's called The Boyfriend. Will you be taking the title role? started work this evening, his first job, and he was attacked. Oh, no. One of those, um, takeaway pizza places. <laughs> a biker came in and hit him for no reason at all. Now he's in hospital with delayed concussion. Is he going to be all right, though? Uh, we think so. Uh, thank you for your concern. Uh, there was another customer in there, you know. Did absolutely nothing at all to help the poor man. <laughs> Just took his food without paying for it, and said something about Colin being late. The poor boy was concussed. <laughs> what is society coming to, eh? <laughs> Good night. Good night. Without paying for it. You said it was your treat. You got us to buy all the drinks in the pub. <laughs> See you in the morning, then. <laughs> I'm not running it, and that's that. What do you mean you're not running it? Councillor Stewart has spoken to me about your behaviour, Gavin. He tells me you were drunk. Drunk? Says you were squelching and couldn't walk properly. <laughs> oh, you're lucky. He says he won't carry the matter any further as long as we drop these ridiculous claims. Ridiculous claims? What about the pictures, Jackie? 
Are two people on a doorstep? Oh, sensational. You wouldn't kiss her, Miss Mulkit. You've no pictures of him going in. No proof how long he was in there. And what about your tip-off? Is he willing to be named? No, he's another counsellor. But they were talking on the doorstep. I mean, once we get that tape back with the sound amplified, we'll be able to hear what they're saying. There's bound to be something there. I've already heard the tape. It was pretty revealing. What they, what you see, I knew it. I now know how Gooch scored his first run in Test cricket. <laughs> Where Boycott made his maiden century. Fascinating. Great. Just wondering what happened to that. So, maybe we can get on with some proper stories now, ones that we can actually use. I'm especially interested in the attack on that pizza lad. And anything we can get on that bastard who left him. <laughs> the boy's out of hospital now, so go and see him, Gavin. Couldn't, couldn't play her go. I mean, she, I'm not very good at pizza stories. She's much better at that sort of thing. All right, you go and see him, Claire. Tell you what, Gavin. You can interview this woman instead, young writer. Just had her first novel published, already heading up a bestseller list. Give you a few tips, Gav. <laughs> I can't tell you how thrilling it is to see my name in print. What, you must get that feeling every day with the paper. Uh, well, not quite the same thing. And uh, I hear it's selling well. Really well. They reckon it could top 10,000 in hardback. Whatever happens, I, I don't think I'll be in bedsit land for much longer. No. <laughs> And uh, I suppose you had a lot of trouble getting it published. Do you know I didn't? Hardman Press were the first people I sent it to. Snapped it up straight away. How many rejection letters you had now, Gav? A few. Why well, have you written a book? You, a, a, a thriller, you know, it's... Oh. oh, well, all the best. I have to say I'm pretty lucky. I work in publishing, uh, reading unsolicited manuscripts for Simpson and Shriver. Mind-numbing stuff, I can tell you. <laughs> one I read was a thriller by a man called Hardy, I think. Oh. <laughs> Blood Oath. Feud. 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 Decent titles these days, aren't they? <laughs> I seem to have blood in them. Yeah. Crap, was it? <laughs> no, it wasn't crap exactly. It was, uh, competent. Well, the man could clearly put a sentence together. It's just, somehow, I don't think he's ever going to write anything worth publishing. <laughs> I'm sure yours is much better, Gavin. What's your title? The Carpet. <laughs> the Carpet? Well, that's an unusual title. Where did you get that from? Well, it just sort of came to me. <laughs> so, uh, tell me, have you written anything else? Finished my second book yesterday. Oh, what a relief. Well, you can have a copy if you like. Sneak preview? Yeah. Super. I just get it. Competent. You said you wanted some feedback. There we go. Thanks. And so you, you can't remember the customer at all? I mean, what he looked like? Not really. I mean, maybe if I saw him again. Well, I'm sorry. It's... No, no, that that's fine. No problem. I mean, it's all... I remember the big bloke coming in, like, grabbing me, pulling me towards him, and then I... Hello, Gavin. I'm still here, yes. Yes, he was talking to me when you rang. What do you want? I just want him to know how it feels. Hiya. Hi. I just thought you'd like to know that the, the pizza boy is very vague about the whole thing. Thank God for that. Uh, That's a problem. Yeah. What was that phone call about, then? Oh, nothing. Why did you go and see the writer? It looks good. Golly, is she this glammy in the flesh, Gav? She's got quite a smouldering look, hasn't she? Her new novel certainly has. Have you been burning something, Gavin? Mm -hmm. Her new novel. <laughs> Sorry? She uh, gave me a copy of her latest manuscript to read. So, uh, I burnt it. Why? Well, it turns out she's not just a writer, she's a publisher's reader as well. She was the one that turned down my uh, thriller for Simpson and Shriver. Oh. She actually told me I would never write anything worth publishing. Then she gave me a copy of her latest uh, manuscript to read. 
and it was absolutely bloody brilliant. <laughs> so I burnt it. Burnt it? Yeah, well, it's a present. I can do what I like with it. Well, I'll remember that next birthday. I won't bother wrapping anything. I'll just set light to it. <laughs> oh, no, thanks. I was thinking of eating out tonight. I, I thought you might like to join me, actually. Sure. Where would you like to eat? Outside Mrs. Lever's house. Oh, no. Oh, come on, Gavin. Councillor Stewart might come back. Outside Mrs. Lever's house. Yeah, we might try and sneak in in the, in the middle of the night or something. I cannot think of one reason why I should sit in your car all night with you alone. You knew he wasn't going to turn up. Hmm. Didn't know Mike was. <laughs> Gower's last test. you got to hear this. Could I remind you people that it is now... 12 o'clock and I need to put this paper to bed by two. So I'd like a really big effort. Please, bags of energy. Okay. Where are you off to? I said it's 12 o'clock, I'm gonna get some lunch. <laughs> no one is gonna get lunch, Mike. Food will be brought in. Now get on with it. I really am sorry about last night, Gav. Just don't ask me to sit outside Mrs. Laver's house ever. How about sitting outside Councillor Stewart's house now? <sighs> oh, no, Gavin, listen. We've got to keep an eye on him. Apparently, he's seeing a woman at the swimming club as well. A Mrs. Rollinson. Oh, for God's sake. I mean, what if he starts giving her grants? We'll be the only small town with an Olympic pool. <laughs> I'm not listening to you anymore, Claire. Oh, great food. <laughs> Hello again. Oh, hello. I'm just writing up your story. Well, I've never been in a paper before. Oh, well, it's quite exciting, isn't it? Thanks. <laughs> Kevin! I'm not listening to you, Claire. <clears throat> I've uh, got a pizza left over. Is there somebody I've missed out? read it for you personally. Oh, thank you. Well, we writers must stick together. <laughs> Actually, I was wondering if you could do me a favour. You know that manuscript I gave you? Well, unfortunately, my computer's crashed. I've got someone working on it, but, well, if you can't get it out, yours is the only copy. <laughs> if you could let me have it back, I'd be really grateful. You should sit down, <laughs> and I'll tell you what happened. I see. Your dog ate it. Yeah, my damn dog. I, I am so sorry. You know, I left it on the desk for a moment, and he ate it. Yeah, well, when I say he ate it, didn't actually swallow it. You know, he just chewed it a lot. Why? Yeah, well, he's a dog. I mean, how should I know? <laughs> I, I am so sorry. Well, no, no, it's not your fault. Well, you didn't do it. I hold myself responsible. <laughs> it's just one of those things. Well, he's clearly not normally a bad dog. Anyone can see that. Can they? Well, yes. Most dogs scratch the furniture, scuff up the carpet. Yours doesn't seem to leave a mark. Yeah. You'd hardly know you'd got one. <laughs> <laughs> Quite. <laughs> Well, you know, he, he, he does keep himself very much to himself. He's a very quiet little dog. Well, what sort is he? A dash hound. <laughs> you know, a nice little dash hound. Oh, with big jaws. Powerful <laughs> legs, too. Sorry? Wait, you said he got it off the desk. That's quite a leap for a dash hound. <laughs> that 
is quite a leap for a dash hound. In fact, that's why I call him Leapy. <laughs> He's amazing at leaping. Oh, Leapy. Yeah, <laughs> incredible. He's sort of whoop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Leapy. Where is he? Hey, well, uh, Leapy. No, no, no. He... Leapy. Where are you? Leapy. Mm, I had him put down. <laughs> Down. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I will not have dogs destroying things. You know, if they can't behave themselves, then that's it. <laughs> Kaput. Good God. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty strict with dogs. Well, it's only a book. Yeah. And he won't do that again. <laughs> well, I don't know what to say. I, I feel terrible now. I mean, I'm sure I'll get a copy out of my computer eventually. Well, you really didn't no, have... No, 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 I did. He paid the price. Well, um, I'd better be going. Um, best of luck with the book. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Morning, Gav. That woman get a book out of the computer, yeah? I don't know. I haven't heard anything for days. Oh, by the way, got you this. Poor old Leapy. This is terribly. I know. <laughs> you want to cover me all over with whipping cream and then lick it off. <laughs> Lovely. No, no, uh, no, I won't lick any of you. No. Actually, I'm allergic to dairy products. <laughs> Mm. We outside that counsellor's place again last night. Claire got some tip off that he was seeing some woman from the swimming club, but nothing doing. Have you really? So she's off out there again tonight. Gosh, must cost you a fortune in cling film. <laughs> what is she doing? Well, that, don't know. She's been on there for the last 20 minutes. With a hoover? Well, uh, I mean, it's a novel idea. Go away, you sad man. What are you doing? The police were tracing that call. Well, they weren't. Yes, they were. They called earlier to give me the tip-off that some natter would be ringing, and they told me to keep talking so that they could trace the call. How could the police possibly know he'd be calling you? <laughs> I've just been conned into holding the longest obscene <laughs> phone call in history. <laughs> Oh, that is horrible. That is disgusting. How could he? I'll tell you what I'd like to know. Oh. What did you use the cling film for? <laughs> I should have realised, Claire. Well, I know I should have, maybe, but I didn't, all right, because I, I happen to be very, very tired at the moment. Does he wrap it round his body, or what? I've been trying to nab that counsellor the last few nights. I told you that's a waste of time. Oh, well, I wouldn't expect you to understand, Gavin. You... You burn people's books. Now, Gavin did not burn that book, remember? It was eaten by his dog, Leapy. <laughs> oh, you think that's so funny, don't well, you? Like or something. How about the truth? For once in your life. Oh, God, men. If you're not cheating on your wives, you're making dirty little phone calls or lying to people and sniggering behind their backs, you're pathetic. The whole lot of you. And as for you, Gavin, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You're so... Be oh, you're so disappointing. <laughs> Melanie Lawrence. Hi. Uh, Gavin Nelson here. Listen, I, I, I just wondered if you'd gotten your uh, manuscript out of the computer yet. Oh, right. well... Listen, there was uh, something I thought I ought to tell you about the uh, copy that you gave to me. Yeah, you see, the thing is that uh, I read it before Leapy ate it and I thought it was really good. That's all I wanted to say. Thanks, bye. Mrs. Lavers. Hi, this is a Mr. Hardy from the council. 
There was something I thought you ought to know about Councillor Stewart and uh, Mrs. Rawlinson. The hysterical Mrs. Lavers then stormed into the councillor's house screaming, where's the bathing bitch? <laughs> when she couldn't find Mrs. Rawlinson, she punched Councillor Stewart again and declared he was useless in bed anyway. <laughs> she then apologised to Mrs. Stewart for interrupting her bridge evening. She found out her drama grant had been reallocated to the swimming club. Some council official had told her, apparently. Bit of luck you were there, Claire. Just the sort of expose we need. Didn't I say you'd nail him if you kept at it? No, you didn't, actually. <laughs> well, she certainly dished the dirt. South Pacific's not the only thing performed on that revolving stage. <laughs> the last thing she said that got me. What was that? Him and his cling film. What is it with that stuff? <laughs> See, Gavin? Told you it was worth going back there every night. I got him. Mm -hmm. No thanks to you. Mm -hmm. It's all thanks to that tip-off from the council official, Mr Hardy. <laughs> you are a disgrace, Gavin Nelson. What you did was unethical and entirely wrong. I know. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you. I hope you're not trying to get me drunk so you can take advantage of me. Because I am here to tell you, it takes more than a bottle of wine to get me going. It takes three. <laughs> 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 no, please, no. <sighs> you better get it. Hi. Sorry to bother you. I, I thought you'd like to know I got my manuscript out of the computer. Oh, good. <laughs> Well, and uh, there was something else. Well, I felt terribly guilty about your dog, Leapy. So I got you a replacement. Aww. I hope he brings you lots of joy and happiness. Hello. <sighs> what is that? <laughs> is that a dog? It's a present I've just bought him for this gentleman. Oh, I'm sorry, dear, but no pets are allowed in these rooms. Well, that's what they must I be. am the landlady. I should know. Mr. Nelson's had a dog here for ages. This is to replace the one that's just died. Is this true, Gavin? You've had a dog in there? Well, it must be true. Otherwise, what happened to my manuscript? Is there a problem, Gavin? Look, I'll be off now, aren't I? Thanks for the tea. <laughs> you! <laughs> that's the bloke who left me when I got it in the shop. Mr. Nelson! I think we need to talk about your tenancy agreement. <laughs> I want to spread the news all around About the new love that I found You better read about it Of course being gotcha by Noel's house party hasn't damaged my career. I can still sell out a theatre. Two for the upper circle, please. If you don't want to see a grown man cry, then don't watch Noel's house party. Saturday, 6.15 on BBC One. Dawn French is in danger of falling prey to murder most horrid now. The plot thickens on BBC Two. Tonight on BBC One. Everybody's talking about the truth but nobody's telling it. Brian.